Okay, good evening, everybody. Are you guys okay? Are we torturing you? That's not our intention. Our intention is to help you and to collaborate with you. It's been said that many Catholics, most Catholics, have a third grade understanding of their faith. May it not be so with us, right? It's been said, too, that we don't know how to bring others to Christ. May it not so be with us. May, may we be those who bring Christ to others and help disciple others to Christ. So, being the month of May, uh, typically it's also known as the month of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So, it's important that we understand Mary's role in our salvation. Do we worship Mary? No. Worship God alone, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do we honor Mary? Yes. Do we love her? Does she intercede in heaven for us? Yes, right? Okay, so many of our evangelical or Protestant brothers and sisters find what we believe about Mary uh, is their biggest objection but they don't know what we believe. And so it's important that we know what we believe, what God has revealed, so that we can clarify things for them, right? And so uh, once Protestants and evangelicals find out what we believe, they typically say, oh, I believe that too, right? So uh, it's important that we know what role she plays, in our salvation, all of what we believe about Mary refers to Christ Jesus, right? So, what we believe about her is what we believe about Jesus. And what, what the church teaches about Mary illumines and enlightens what we believe about Christ Jesus. For she is inseparable from the work of her son, right? God chose to give us his son through her, right? And so the video which we just watched talked about four doctrines that we believe about the Blessed Virgin Mary, and they help us to understand Christ. All right, so here's the test. What are the four doctrines? The children are getting anxious. They want to answer. Parents are looking off into the sunset. Huh? Anybody bold to try and hit one of the four? Okay, we got in front row. If I had some prizes, I would give it to you. Immaculate conception. It doesn't refer to the conception of Jesus. It refers to how, what are, her, what are Mary's parents' names? Joachim and Anne, right? Joaquin and Anna, right? So when they conceived Mary, anticipating that she was to be the mother of his son, God protected her from original sin, okay? That's called the Immaculate Conception. Now, the virgin birth or the miraculous conception of Jesus will happen several years later. Okay, so we got that. And we were in order so far. I wasn't expecting for us to go in order, but we're in order, right? The Immaculate Conception. What's number two or number three? Assumptions number four, right? So that the end of her days, she was assumed body and soul into... Jesus gave her the fruits of his resurrection. Okay, we got number one and number four, Immaculate Conception and Assumption. Uh-oh, people are busting out the Googles. Oh, yeah, okay. What's another doctrine? Okay, good. My front row. She's the mother of God. Boom, right? That's number three. Looking for... Uh-oh. Almost. 
¿Qué pasó? Check, one, two. One, two. <laughs> okay. We'll need another microphone. So uh, we need one more doctrine. One more doctrine. I'll give you a hint. The concept starts with the V, as in Victor, and ends with the, uh, yes, an N, right? Virgin, right? So she was immaculately conceived. She was, is, and ever will be a virgin. She's the mother of God. And she was assumed into heaven, right? So it's important that we understand that's what we believe. So can you guys help me pass these out? Like, Yep, parents. And children can have some too. Let me have one come in. Check, one, two. ¿Qué pasó? Check, one, two. So I like to joke, and it, oh, it actually, it's not a joke, it actually happens, that... Wherever I go, if there's no microphone problems, there will be. And if there are microphone problems when I go to a spot, they'll get worse. <laughs> it's, a, it's a joke that the Lord has, him and I have. One time, one time I went to a church, and it was my first time there celebrating Mass. And the priest, he goes, I'm going to be in my office while you celebrate this funeral Mass. And I said, do you have any microphone problems here? And he said, no, everything's fine. Halfway through the Mass, I'm using the microphone, and it sounded like Chewbacca got the microphone and started screaming. And we had no clue what was going on. I was waiting for Chewbacca to go, right? But he didn't do it, right? And the pastor came in and was like, what's going on? I said, no, it's me. You know, it's wherever I go, microphone problems. So, I don't know what happened, pero... It, it, it hits, when I hit that, it hits, but it doesn't pick up my voice. So, so, why would God protect her from original sin? Because God didn't want sin to have any part of Jesus' earthly journey. Therefore, the Bible says that she's full of grace. When the angel talks to her, he says, Hail Mary, most full of grace. The Bible says this about two people. In Luke, it says that Jesus, or that in Luke chapter 1, it says that Mary is most full of grace. And in John, the Gospel of John, it says Jesus was most full of grace. Now, in the Acts of the Apostles, it does say that Stephen was full of grace but not most full of grace, right? And so, Mary was protected from original sin. She is virgin. Now, the video said that she might have been consecrated as a virgin in a temple. That may or may not be true. But what is certainly true 
and the church was there from the beginning, is that she was a virgin, right? And so, uh, this is not to take away from marriage, but uh, Joseph was called to care for Mary and Jesus in a special way, in a celibate way. And so, uh, Mary's virginity manifests God's absolute initiative with the Blessed Virgin Mary. Jesus was conceived by who? The Holy Spirit. We say that every Sunday, we're not? He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. And He was born of the... Okay, there you go, right? So, the Holy Spirit overshadowed her, right? And she, Jesus took His humanity from her, right? Is Jesus God? Yes, right? That's why Elizabeth, Mary's kinswoman, says, Who am I that the mother of my... The mother of my... Starts with an L. Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to visit me? Blessed are you who believed what God had spoken to you. What did God speak to the Virgin Mary through the angel? That she would be the mother of God. And they were to give him the name... Jesus. Jesus' name, Yeshua, means the Lord saves us. Saves us from what? Sin, death, hell, the devil from ourselves, right? He has opened up the gates of heaven, right? So Mary's title, Mother of God, is inseparable from Jesus because Jesus is the Son of God and He's the Son of Mary, right? To deny that Mary is the Mother of God is to deny that Jesus is God. To deny that Mary's Son is God or to deny His incarnation is to deny that Jesus took our human nature. And the apostles, they would call Jesus by His name, Yeshua, but they would also call Him what? Lord, right? Because that's a title for God, right? So we have... Immaculate Conception, Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Assumption. Does anybody know what day we celebrate Assumption? It's on your cheat sheet. Oops, my bad, my bad. Okay, you know what? Take out your pencil. Take out your pencil. I made a mistake. It's August 15th, right? I was typing too fast. So August 15th is the solemnity of the Assumption. So after Jesus' resurrection, she spent time in Jerusalem, but also went to live in Ephesus, right? Who did she live with in Ephesus? What? Yes, one of the apostles, John, right? And we believe that perhaps... She died or fell asleep in Jerusalem. And we won't find her grave anywhere because her body was taken into heaven, body and soul. Not? In the Gospel, it talks about the brothers and sisters of Jesus. Now, we've just reflected on the virginity of Mary. This is a trick question. Did Mary have any other children? No. The apostles and all the early church know this because they were there. Right? Not? So, when the Bible talks about the brothers and sisters of Jesus, who are these people? They are his cousins? Or perhaps we don't know for sure that Joseph might have been a widow and might have had children from a previous relationship. We don't know that for sure. Right? But what we do know is that the Virgin Mary did not have any other children. She didn't have that type of a relationship with Joseph. Right? So we're going to open up our Bible. We're going to open it up to Galatians 1.19.
So it's a New Testament book. It's after Romans. Chapter 1, verses 19. 119. It's really quick. If you blink, you're going to miss it. Yeah? But I didn't see any other of the apostles except for James, the brother of the Lord. So this brother that's mentioned here is not... Yes? Galatians 1.19. Galatians 1.19. So almost to the end of your Bible, right? We should know our Bible, where the books are. So this James, the brother of the Lord, is he a son of the Virgin Mary? No. no. Okay. So let's go to Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. It says, but in the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might save those who were living under the law and grant us the privilege of becoming sons and daughters of God. So when it says that God sent his son, born of a woman, who's the woman? Mary. Mary. Okay, right? Let's go to... Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. Now we're going to go backwards. So turn left. Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. Verses 20 and following. Jack one, two. That's amazing, huh? Ay, ay, ay. So, God is good all the time. All the time. Okay, so, in the Gospel of Matthew, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 20, the angel of the Lord appears to Joseph. Verse 20. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife because he who has been conceived in her has been conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. She will have a son and you will give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill that what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and bear a son, and they shall give him the name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Okay, so we're going to go to Luke chapter 1, verse 26 and following. So turn right. So at uh, verses 26 and following, in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to a village of Galilee named Nazareth, where a young woman whose name was Mary lived. She was a virgin, but betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. 
The angel entered into the house where she was and said, Hail, most full of grace, the Lord is with you. Mary was perplexed at these words, and she began to question what this greeting meant. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and bear a son, and you will give him the name Jesus. He will be great, will be called Son of the Most High. And he will take the throne of David, his ancestor. And a little bit later on in verse 34, Mary says, How can this be, since I have no relations with the man? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For this reason, the children that the child that will be born of you will be called holy, the Son of God. Know this, that your kinswoman Elizabeth is also to bear a son, despite her old age. She's now in the sixth month, for nothing is impossible for God. Okay, so let's go to chapter 2 of Luke. So in the first verses of chapter 2 there, we see there's a census, and Joseph went to be registered in his town of Bethlehem. So at verse 4, chapter 2, verse 4, for this reason Joseph left his town of Nazareth in the region of Galilee and went to Bethlehem in Judea, where David the king was born, because David or Joseph was a descendant of David. He went there to register along with Mary, his wife, who was pregnant, was with a child. And it came to happen that while they were in Bethlehem, it came time for Mary to give birth. And there, her firstborn son was born and wrapped in swaddling clothes. She put him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, it's common to say firstborn even if there's no children. In this case, it's true. Did Mary have other children? No. No. And even the Bible says that Joseph had no relations with her until she gave birth. In the Greek, the word heos in Greek doesn't imply a change in the future, like in our language it does, right? Think about how our language changes, right? Do you guys still use the same concepts that you said in the 80s now? No. What if you told some of the kids at Brawley High School some of the phrases that you guys used in, in the 80s? Would they understand what you said? No. Right? Uh, so when I was in high school, people would say, oh, dang, man, that's sick. That is sick. Do they say that nowadays? <laughs> oh, no, the kids are laughing up here in front. <laughs> I guess people still say that's cool, right? What did they say in the 80s? Awesome. awesome? Okay, we can understand that. Rad? Rad? Okay, that one's out of the closet, yeah. Nobody says that anymore, but that, that we did use that. Oh, dude, that's rad, right? Ridiculous? Is that what you guys say? That's ridiculous? So it would be the opposite of what it really means? That's totally ridiculous, man. Okay. You say that now? Okay. Tubular? That's the 80s, right? Do you guys know what tubular means? <laughs> All right. So we're talking about ancient Greek here. Talking about 2,000 years ago. And we're translating it into a modern language. Do the words mean the same thing over the years? Can you guys pick up a book of Shakespeare and understand it? No. It's written in English. Why can't we understand it? Old school. Right? Plus he made up a lot of stuff. So, right? So, the reason the church exists is to teach the Bible with authority. What happens when we try to understand the Bible apart from the church? You get things wrong sometimes, right? So on your little sheet of paper, you have all the passages that refer to Mary in the order of the, well, maso menos in the order in which they come out of the Bible. But if we were to organize the scriptures in the order of their being written, and for this I want to pull up another screen here.
Ok. Híjole. Sí, fue que te expresé. Más o menos, ¿quién es that? So you see in the right hand column the year in which these events happened. The descent of the Holy Spirit, first persecutions, conversion of Paul there, 36. Okay. You see when 1 Thessalonians, that's the first book of the New Testament to be written, all right? 2 Thessalonians is next, and 1 Corinthians, Galatians, Romans, Luke. Where's Mark at? Mark and Matthew were written before Luke. Put up at the top. Matthew, there you go. Boom. Matthew. I must be going blind. All right. So the last book of the Bible to be written is Revelation. So if in the first part it, it just says that he was born of a woman, right? Then we see in the Gospels later on, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, how she's involved in her life. Then we see in the Gospel of John, Jesus works his first miracle at a wedding feast in what city? Cana of Galilee, right? So that's what we want to do next. We want to go to John chapter 2. So you guys should be doing exercises with the Bible at home so that you know where the books are, right? Right. Even more than you know the passwords of your own email address, you should know where the books of the Bible are, right? Even before you memorize the words to your favorite song, verdad? you should know where the books of the Bible are, right? John chapter 2. There was a wedding feast of Cana in Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. She was there first. Jesus and his disciples were also invited, almost secondarily, but not. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no more wine. Jesus answered her, woman, why do you tell me this? My hour has not yet come. Which hour is he talking about? The hour on the cross. Huh? That's the manifestation of God's love. Jesus on the cross. right? She turns to the servers and says, do whatever he tells you. There were six stone water jars there for Jewish purifications. Each one of the jars enough to hold 50 to 70 liters of water. Jesus said to the servants, Fill these water jars to the brim. Then Jesus tells them, take some out now and take it to the head waiter. They did so. The head waiter drank the water, converted into wine without knowing where it had come from. Only the servants knew where it had come from. And he called the bridegroom and said, everyone serves the best wine first, and then when everyone has drunk freely, they serve the lesser wine, but you have saved the good wine until now. This was the first miracle that Jesus worked in the wedding feast of Cana in Galilee, and his disciples began to believe in him. So Mary's last words in the Bible are, do... Okay, you guys should know that. We just read it, right? Huh? Do whatever he tells you, right? Not whatever, right? No, do whatever he tells you, right? Do what Jesus asked of you. What, is Jesus, what does Jesus tell us to do? And we just heard it this past Sunday. Love one another as I... Boom. The same love with which God loves us is the love with which we love God and love others. Can Mary work miracles? No. Only God can. 
But can miracles come through her intercession? Think about it. Can miracles come about through her intercession? Yes. Water became wine. Now, these stone jars were used for washing hands. So people were washing their hands, right? And there, there was dirty water in there. And then they filled it up to the brim. So in addition to changing water into wine, what did he do? Was it dirty wine? Did it have filth in there? No, Jesus also worked that miracle. The, the servants were probably like, Jesus says, okay, fill those water jars. Okay, they filled it up. And they, this, the water's kind of kind of nasty. And Jesus says, okay, take some to the head waiter. And like, oh, we're going to give nasty water to the waiter. Let's see if he drinks it. Ah. If they didn't like him, they're like, yes. But Jesus had cleansed the water and made it into the best wine they ever had. So the guy's like, man, you should have served this wine first, right? Was it grape juice or wine? It was wine, but right? Sometimes our Protestant brothers and sisters, they get up in your face. They say, oh, Mary had other kids. The Bible says so. Okay, show me. They, they show you the passage about the brothers and sisters of Jesus. You can say, you know what, homie? My church was there, you know? And uh, those brothers and sisters are his kinsmen. They're not sons and daughters of Mary. The Bible doesn't say that. It just says brothers and sisters, right? And what else what I was going to say about that? Dang it, I was going to say something else. It was about the wedding feast now. Okay, we got the children. Now I'm going to the wedding feast. Oh! Yeah, Protestants say, oh, Jesus never drank wine. He only drank grape juice. That's the other thing, right? Eh, wrong, right? So, because uh, sometimes, sometimes Protestants say, oh, you can't drink alcohol. Is that true? It's not true. The Bible clearly says we can never get drunk, right? So all the adults out there, if you're getting drunk, just stop. If you can't handle it, just stop. Right? Okay? We're supposed to call to live in moderation. Okay, so if we were to organize the scriptures in order from their being written, that's what follows. We're almost there. Hold on to your question, Michael. We're going to go to Revelation now. Revelation chapter 12 was the la one of the last chapters to be written in the Bible. It's written in the year 97. Last book of the Bible, you can't miss it, okay? Okay, Romans chapter 12, uh, Romans, Revelation, chapter 12, verse 1. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon at her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and shouted with labor pains, for she was about to give birth. Then there appeared in the heavens another sign, a great dragon, a red dragon, who had seven heads and ten horns. Uh, keeps on going uh, with the tail, the dragon's tail, he threw down the stars from the heavens and the dragon wanted to devour the son who was about to be born. And in verse 5, the woman gave birth to a son destined to rule the universe with an iron rod. But the son was taken before God and the throne and the woman fled to the desert where God had prepared a place for her. Okay. So, the woman clothed with the sun, with the moon at her feet, and the crown of 12 stars, who gives birth to the one man who's destined to rule the whole universe. Who is this son? Jesus. Who's the woman? Mary, right? So, when, when the Blessed Virgin Mary was taken into heaven, was her mission over? No. What does she do in heaven? 
She intercedes for us. Huh? Do we have to believe that she appeared in Guadalupe, 1531? We don't have to believe. But if you do believe, it's optional, it's not necessary to believe that for our salvation. If you do believe, how was she, how did she come? What was her dress like? She was clothed with the... What did we just read in the Bible? She was clothed, clothed with the sun. And what's at her feet? The moon. On her mantle, the stars. She wears a black belt, which for the Nahuatl, which mean, means that she's pregnant. And over her tummy, she has the four leafed flower, which for the Nahuatl means God or divinity. So who is she pregnant with? Jesus, right? Son of God. Okay, yes, you have a question in the front row here. The brothers and sisters of Jesus were his cousins. Yeah. We can be, so this is a good question, how do we become brothers and sisters of Jesus? By being baptized, right? We become members of God's family through baptism. And at the cross, this is in the Gospel of John, Jesus says to John, Behold your... Tomorrow's Mexican Mother's Day. Behold your mother. And to Mary, he says to her, Behold your son. Right? Sunday on the secular calendar is Mother's Day. Right? So our church, as a church, we honor the Virgin Mary because Jesus honors her. He took her home to heaven. And the Bible, in, in Hebrews chapter 11 and chapter 12, as well as in Revelation chapter 5 and chapter 8, lets us know that the saints intercede for us. What does that mean? It means they're praying for us in heaven. Do they sin in heaven? No. Do they pray in a better way than we do? Yeah. So their prayers help us, whether we believe it or not, or like it or not. And so we adore God, we worship God alone. We honor the saints because they were filled with the Holy Spirit in their life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, the way that we pray to God is different than the way we pray to the saints. The word prayer means ask, pedir, right? Not? So God is the one who grants things, but we ask the saints to intercede for them. So we say, I'm going to pray to God and I'm going to pray to St. Jude Thaddeus. Is that the same type of prayer? No. We pray to God, we're relating to him as our creator, our father, the one through whom we live. When we ask St. Jude Thaddeus to intercede for us, we're asking him, and he's already praying for us. Right? So, is it okay to ask for the saints to pray for us? Yes. Now, I'm going to say something scandalous, but true. Does a Catholic need to pray the rosary? No, it's not mandatory. It's optional. Right? Do you need to pray the rosary to be saved? No. You only need Jesus to be saved. However, Okay, get ready for this one. Do we need to eat the Eucharist to have life within us? Yeah. That's in the Bible, right? So the Hail Mary comes from Luke chapter 1. Hail Mary, most full of grace, the Lord is with you. Then the words of Elizabeth, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Who's the fruit of the womb? Jesus. And so, in communion with what Hebrews teaches us in the book of Revelation, we say, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So the Hail Mary is a biblical prayer. The Our Father comes from the Gospel of Matthew. And the mysteries of the Rosary come from the Bible. So the Rosary is a biblical prayer. But are we required to pray it? The answer is no. But if your mom and dad say, Me home. We're going to pray the rosary. What are you going to do? You're not going to say, Oh, Father Ed said we didn't have to pray. You're going to say, Yes, Mom. Yes, Dad. Right? Because the pastors of the church at home are Mom and Dad. Okay? So everybody's going to church on Sunday, verdad? Yes? See? Si? No? 
Mary is also a symbol of the church. We're called to bear Christ within us. God is our Father. Jesus is our brother. Mary, our mother. The Holy Spirit, our paraclete, par the paraclete and the advocate. The church, our family, right? So do you guys feel more comfortable if you have some friends at school and they say, you guys worship Mary. Do you feel like you can say, wait a second, homie. Let me tell you what we believe, right? I don't know what you heard, but let me tell you what's up. Right? Okay, any other questions before we quit? What's today? Okay, so we're getting ready for the ascension of Jesus into heaven this Sunday. What does the ascension mean? Yes. Yes. He went into heaven. What did he take to heaven that he didn't have when he came down from heaven? What did he take to heaven that he didn't have before he came down? A body, right on? When he came from heaven, he didn't have a body, right on? He immigrated from heaven to earth by the presence and power of the Holy and was born of the Virgin and became man. He died, he rose again, he appeared to the apostles, he taught them, and on the 40th day, he ascended into heaven. And what did he take with him? A body. Do we become angels when we die? No. Nobody does. Okay? So stop saying that. Don't ever say that in your life. Oh, my primo, he's an angel in heaven. Wrong. Or if you lost a little brother or sister in miscarriage, they're an angel in heaven. Wrong. We're always going to be human beings. And we're always, in heaven, we're going to have bodies, right? And no bodies hit the floor there, right? Gotcha, okay. No, so it's a party. Will you be able to embrace one another in heaven? Will you be able to re recognize each other in heaven? If your little sister died, will they be bigger in heaven? Probably, madame. So, you're not going to say, oh, uh, is that my tío over there? You're going to recognize each other right away, right? Does anybody get sick in heaven? Is it better than Disneyland in heaven? Is there any homework in heaven? Are there any taxes in heaven? My taxes were the highest ever this year. I can't believe it. Ay, ay, ay. I had to take out a... Never mind. Anyways. So, I had to take out a loan to pay my taxes. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So, in heaven, is there any suffering? No. Does it get better with each minute? Yes. Do you get bored there? It's impossible. So, the Blessed Virgin Mary is there with the angels and saints. It's going to be amazing. That's where we're called to go. The Ascension is an exciting feast day because Jesus takes the body into heaven. He gets the party going. Ain't no party like a Catholic party because the Catholic party don't stop. Right? It's going to be off the hook. All those Protestants who said, all oh, those saints, no, they're going to be like, oh, snap, I was wrong. This is amazing. I didn't... So I shouldn't say that probably, but it's true. Uh, so keep the faith. Get excited about it. Pray as together as a family. You can pray the rosary. Do we have to pray as a family? Yes, we have to do that. Jesus says pray always. Okay, so I'm going to want my Bibles back. My Bibles back in the cart. Nice and neat. No one's going to steal my Bibles. Get your own Bible. You can get it online if you want. You can download it onto your smartphone or your iPad or your computer. We're going to pray a prayer that you know comes from the gospel. When we ask for our daily bread, we're asking for grace and virtue and strength, charisms, the Holy Spirit. Take the little sheet of paper home, though, with you. Oh, put the Spanish Bibles down below and the English Bibles in the middle. So, Spanish Bibles look kind of orangey. Uh, cartoon Bibles go in the second cart. Japanese anime Bibles go in the second cart. Did you guys learn anything tonight? We want to help you, inform you. Thank you, Miko. If you didn't get one of these, you can get one. We'll have extra ones up here. Okay, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, 
in order to save us, you sent your son, Jesus, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. She's our mother. She's the mother of your son. She intercedes for us. And we ask for her intercession. Heavenly Father, in and through your son, we live, we move, and have our being. We're excited about ascension and Pentecost, the Holy Spirit. Save us and sanctify us. Give us faith. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Be careful. Leave me. Oh, is there any announcements? Oh, hold on. Darn it. Gotcha. There's announcements.